The fourth organ of elimin elimination is the colon. Only microscopic waste can come out via your skin, via your lungs and via your kidneys. The largest pieces of waste is eliminated via the colon. And you may have noticed that the colon has a mind of its own. I have a book at home called The Second Brain. It's all on the colon. Have you noticed that when you tell it to stop, it won't? And when it, you tell it to go, it won't. It has a mind of its own. So the colon needs stimulation. It does not need irritation. It needs stimulation. So what stimulates the colon? Let's make a stimulation list. Well, the first point is laughter. Laughter relaxes the colon. Did you know that children laugh 125 times a day? So should we. Laughter is very good medicine and it's very good for the colon. That is Barbara O'Neill, a naturopath and health educator committed to sharing the benefits of natural healing. Today, we're focusing on an essential part of your body's detoxification system, the colon. Your colon, also known as the large intestine, plays a crucial role in eliminating waste from the body. After your digestive system has absorbed the nutrients from your food, the colon takes over to expel the leftover waste. This process is vital for maintaining overall health and preventing toxins from building up in your body. When your colon isn't functioning properly, waste and toxins can accumulate, leading to various health issues like constipation, bloating, and even more serious conditions over time. That's why it's so important to support your colon and keep it in good working order. Some people find that occasional colon cleanses using natural ingredients can be beneficial. Herbal teas, such as those containing senna or ginger, can gently support bowel movements. However, it's important to approach cleansing with care and to listen to your body's needs. Throughout the video, we'll also share some valuable information and easy recipes to incorporate Barbara's finding. Now let's listen more to Barbara explore how you can naturally support colon health and detoxification. What else stimulates the colon is water. One of the main functions of the colon is to take water out so stools are formed so that the contents can be passed with ease. So when someone is dehydrated, usually more water gets taken out of the colon than should be taken out of the colon. Then you've got cement, rabbit pellets. So very important that you be drinking adequate water so that that colon functions properly. Here are a few refreshing and healthy water drink recipes that you can easily make at home. First, try the lemon cucumber detox water by adding thinly sliced lemon, cucumber, and a few fresh mint leaves to a pitcher of water. Let it sit in the refrigerator for at least two hours before drinking to enjoy a refreshing and detoxifying beverage. Next, the ginger and lemon water offers a zesty flavor with health benefits. Simply add a sliced inch of fresh ginger and the juice of one lemon to water and let it infuse for at least an hour in the fridge. This drink is great for digestion and boosting your immune system. For a fruity twist, the berry-infused water is a perfect choice. Combine half a cup of mixed berries like strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries with a few fresh basil or mint leaves in a pitcher of water. After a couple of hours in the refrigerator, you'll have a delicious, berry-flavored drink that's full of antioxidants. The citrus and mint water is another refreshing option. Add thin slices of one orange and one lemon along with a few sprigs of fresh mint to water, then let the mixture infuse in the fridge for at least two hours. The result is a crisp and invigorating citrus drink that's perfect for a hot day. For a cozy, subtly sweet beverage, try the apple cinnamon water. Simply place thin slices of an apple and a cinnamon stick into water and let it sit in the fridge for at least two hours. This drink combines the natural sweetness of apples with the warmth of cinnamon for a comforting and hydrating option. 
Lastly, the pineapple mint water brings a tropical flair to your hydration routine. Add half a cup of fresh pineapple chunks and a few mint leaves to water and let it infuse for 2-4 to four hours in the refrigerator. This refreshing drink is perfect for those who love a hint of sweetness with a minty freshness. These infused water recipes not only add flavor to your daily water intake, but also provide various health benefits, making hydration a more enjoyable and nutritious experience. Barbara will now explain the third thing that stimulates the colon. What also stimulates the colon is exercise. When you exercise, you increase blood supply to the colon and the blood supply to the colon is massive. But something else is also happening when you exercise. Your movement of your torso. Every step that you take, your colon is moving. So exercise is vital for the proper functioning of the colon. What else stimulates the colon? Fiber. Fiber gently sweeps the colon. Fiber does two things. It gently sweeps the colon and it stimulates movement movement through the colon. It is important that the peristalsis in the colon be moving ever forward, ever forward. So fibre does two vital things. It sweeps the colon and our colon basically is like this. It's got lots of little grooves in there. There's the appendix, there's the small intestine and here's the colon here and that's where everything comes out. And because of all these little corners and grooves, it's vital that fibre be part, a main part of the food so that that gets swept every day. And again, the fibre stimulates the movement through the colon. Like Barbara said, foods high in fibre are essential for maintaining digestive health and overall well-being. Some excellent sources of fibre include fruits like apples, pears, raspberries, and oranges, which not only provide sweetness, but also add bulk to your diet. Vegetables such as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, carrots, and sweet potatoes are also rich in fiber, offering a range of nutrients along with their digestive benefits. Whole grains like oats, brown rice, quinoa, and barley are packed with fiber, helping to keep you full and satisfied. Legumes, including lentils, black beans, chickpeas, and kidney beans are another fantastic source of fiber, as well as protein, making them a versatile addition to meals. Nuts and seeds, such as almonds, chia seeds, and flax seeds also contribute a healthy dose of fiber, along with beneficial fats. Incorporating these fiber-rich foods into your diet can support digestive health, aid in weight management, and reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Barbara will now explain how often they should go. Dr. Kellogg said three intakes of food a day should equal three evacuations of food a day. Now, or evacuations a day, most people are surprised to hear that because most Aussies think if they go once a, once a day, they're going well. Well, that would only be applicable if they ate one meal a day. And I don't know anyone that does that. Actually, I have met people who eat one meal a day. It starts in the morning and it doesn't, fit, doesn't stop till they go to bed. <laughs> no, that's not counted. The fifth thing that stimulates the colon will now be described by Barbara. So we should be having a meal, then we should be having a nice five hour break, ideally, and then we should be having another meal. That's what the stomach and the colon loves. We are creatures of habit. And the colon loves you to be in a habit. <clears throat> it likes you to eat at the same time every day, drink at the same time every day, go to bed at the same time every day, get up at the same time every day. Now obviously we can't, there are times when we can't always do that. And the, and the colon can cope with that. But how many people when they travel say their colon stops because what's happened? They've been thrown out of their usually habit, their usual habit times. The colon loves it when you have breakfast at seven o'clock or 7.30 or 8 every day. What it doesn't like is 5 o'clock one day, 10 o'clock another, 8 o'clock another, 1 o'clock another. It doesn't like that. It, it can cope with the odd day. 
In a couple of weeks I'm travelling to America so everything's going to be thrown out. It can cope with that. It doesn't mean you have to have breakfast at 7 o'clock every day and it's 5 past 7 you're in trouble or it's 5 to 7. No, no, no. The colon can cope with about a half an hour either side. But we are creatures of habit. Your cells are creature of habit. Your colon is a creature of habit. And the good thing about giving your body times where you do the same things at the same time every day is you can predict. <laughs> You can predict when the colon is going to decide to evacuate, evacuate and that's very handy because it's not handy when we're on a plane and we're about to land and we need to go. And at that time we are very thankful for our anal sphincter because <laughs> it will hold. Barbara will now explain why evacuation habits are so important. The problem is most people use that anal sphincter because they're watching a television show and it's getting excited and they don't want to go. Or they're on the phone to a girlfriend and they're in a busy, they're busy in the middle of an exciting story or she's telling you something and they don't want to go. Can you see what I mean? Many people use this, uh, what we're very glad of, the anal sphincter holding when the rest of our body wants to go. We're very glad of that. But many people use it too often. And then the colon gets into a habit. And I think most people know that the person feels to go, but they don't go because they're in the middle of an interesting game or show. And then when it all finishes, they go to go and they can't go. Because when you feel to go, this area of the colon fills up and that's the pressure on the anal sphincter. If you don't go, then everything actually falls back into the previous part of the colon. And the water continues to come out because remember that's one of the main functions of the colon is to take water out so stools are formed. And what's happening to this bit that's staying in there longer than it should be staying in there? It's getting drier and harder and then it's more difficult to pass so the person says I'm going to have to give it a bit of help and strain and then terrible things pop out called hemorrhoids. I remember when I used to work in the operating theatre and I assisted for some hemorrhoidectomies. Oh, nasty. They put a little bit of suture line around the neck and just cut it off. I always used to think, oh dear, uh, that's going to feel terrible when they wake up. Well, nothing compared to how they're going to feel when they pass their first bowel motion. And usually painkillers are given and painkillers are well known to constipate so you get this vicious vicious cycle so remember a prevention is worth an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure we should change that eh? because we're back in we're into kilos now but this is prevention very important to prevent any problems in the gastrointestinal tract, especially at the bottom end. It should be running very nicely and very smoothly, and then that makes for a very happy human being. Barbara will tell us about an acronym we should abide by. Remember, important part of the colon, if the sewage system isn't working well, nothing works well. Just remember this that when you feel to go, promptly answer nature's immediate call. Got that? We need to promptly answer nature's immediate call because your body panics if you don't. Very important to do that. It's an important part of making sure the colon works well and getting into the habit of listening. Have you ever been to a doctor who won't listen to you? It's very frustrating, isn't it? Don't be that doctor. When your body speaks, you need to listen. One lady said to me, I'm a, I'm a businesswoman, people ring me and they pay $300 an hour to talk to me. She said, if I need to go, I say, excuse me, a crisis has arisen, I'll ring you back. <laughs> really, that's how we, we ought to see it. And remember, it's not the odd day that the plane's landing and you can't go. It's not the odd day you do it, and it's the odd day you don't. It's actually what you do every day that develops the habit patterns of your cells. If you have a look at most babies and children, they, they evacuate after every meal. Then they go to school and they don't want to 
they're too embarrassed to leave the classroom or they're not allowed to leave the classroom and that's really when the habit patterns begin. But the good news is we're constantly being remade and you can change those habit patterns. There are several natural methods to ensure your colon is effectively eliminating waste. Barbara mentioned a high fiber diet, staying hydrated, and regular exercise. In addition, probiotics are important. Incorporating probiotic rich foods like yogurt, kefir, and fermented vegetables can help maintain a healthy balance of gut bacteria, which is crucial for effective digestion and waste elimination. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.